In this section, we're going to take a look at rational functions. And specifically, we're going to be taking a look at the graphs and the various properties of rational functions. And so in this section, we're going to be defining what a horizontal asymptote is and how to find it. We're going to define what a vertical asymptote is, how to find it. We're going to be taking a look at what a hole is in a rational function and then how to find it. And of course, that's if they exist. And then finally, we're going to look at a systematic process to be able to graph rational functions without using a graphing calculator, but then we can check it by using a graphing calculator. So what is a rational function? So a rational function is the quotient of two polynomial functions. And just like any other function, the denominator can't be equal to zero. So a really simplistic example of a rational function might be f at x equals x over x plus one. Okay, that's a rational function. Um, another example might be something to the effect of like x squared minus one over x cubed plus one. All right, and these are just simplistic examples. Um, and eventually we're gonna look at these in detail. Many of the graphs of these rational functions have these things called asymptotes. And what an asymptote is, it's a location in the graph where the function's going to approach a specific value, but it's never gonna reach that value. Okay, so it's going to get infinitesimally close to it, but it's never going to actually get to that value. So um, realistically, what we'd like to do is we'd like to approach that value. Okay, and that's this arrow notation. So if we have x arrow a plus, okay, superscript plus, that means that x is approaching a from the right. And then x approaching a minus, x approaches a from the left. And then if we have x approaching either positive or negative infinity, that would be the far left and the far right behavior. So in other words, x is increasing without bound um, as, uh, and then also x approaches um, negative infinity means that x decreases without bound, okay? So um, these are different ways that we can write these the, the sort of asymptotic behavior, right? Now, a vertical asymptote, we can have the line x equals a, is a vertical asymptote if either f approaches positive or negative infinity as x approaches a. And graphically, what that looks like is if we have this line, and it's an imaginary line, and let's say that x was approaching, and let's call this the line, let's say x equals two, right? Um, and then also, it might do something like that. So this would be where the function f at x is approaching infinity, okay, as x approaches two from the left. And then down here for this component on the lower part, um, this would mean that f at x is approaching negative infinity as x approaches two from the right side. Right? And so that's what our arrow notation means, and that's a vertical asymptote. Okay. Now, a horizontal asymptote in the same vein means that as f approaches b, x is going to approach negative or positive infinity. Okay. And let me give you a couple examples of what that might look like. And so let's say we had this horizontal asymptote right here. Now I'm going to call this the line y equals 1. All right. And maybe we have a function that looks something like this. Okay. And I want you to notice that the function is approaching one this time. So f at x is approaching one as x approaches infinity. Okay? And then over here, the function is also approaching one as x approaches negative infinity. Okay, so that's our two types of asymptotes. That's our horizontal and our vertical asymptotes. Okay, not every function that's rational is going to have a horizontal asymptote and not every function is going to have a vertical asymptote, okay? But a lot of them do. Now, to find vertical asymptotes, it's actually really easy. We just find the zeros of the denominator, okay? So we're going to set that polynomial in the denominator equal to zero, we're going to solve. To find the horizontal asymptotes, we're going to take a look at the degree of the numerator and we're going to take a look at the degree of the denominator, okay? And that's just the highest exponent of the variables. And then these are our rules, okay? So these are rules you wanna make sure that you have in mind. Now, if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then 
the x-axis, or y equals 0, is the horizontal asymptote. If the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then what we do is we just take the coefficients. Okay, So y is going to be equal to the coefficient of the degree of the numerator and the coefficient of the degree of the denominator. Okay, So that, that highest term. So we're just going to take a look at the coefficient. Okay, So we're going to have our leading coefficient and then our leading coefficient. Okay. And then finally, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to look for holes in a graph. Okay. Now, essentially, when we, what we're going to do is we're going to be able to factor these rational functions completely. And then if the numerator and denominator share a common factor, okay, then the zero that's produced from that is going to be where a hole exists. Okay. And we're going to take a look at a lot of examples of this as we go along. Okay. So, Here's a few examples of some rational functions. Okay, so this one has a horizontal asymptote. Okay, so if I was to draw the horizontal asymptote, it would just be the x-axis. And notice that the function is approaching zero as x approaches infinity. Okay, and then over here on this horizontal asymptote, f as x approaches uh, zero as x approaches infinity. There's also a vertical asymptote. And that's going to be the y-axis of this function. And we're saying that x approaches either negative at zero from the left or zero from the right. And then the function would approach infinity from the right side and then negative infinity from the left side. Another example over here, um, this has our vertical asymptote, it's x equals two. And what that means is as x approaches negative two, from the left, then the function is going to approach infinity. Okay. And then on this side, as x approaches 2 from the right, f at x is going to approach negative infinity. Right. And then we could say the same thing about the horizontal asymptotes, except that as f at x approaches 3, x would tend towards infinity. Okay. So and then the same thing on the left side here. This would say that as f at x approaches 3, x is going to tend towards negative infinity. So that's a horizontal asymptote. So that's how we could just use our arrow notation. Now, finally, a hole exists where if we can factor both the numerator and denominator and we have a common factor. Okay, So notice right here we have a common factor. And if we set that equal to 5, so x minus 5 equals 0. That means that x equals 5. And there, notice that there's a hole right here at x equals 5. Okay. Now, to figure out the y location, what we would do is we would cancel these out and then substitute 5 back into the function. Okay. So you can see that this would be 3, 5 plus 1 divided by 5 plus 2. Um, and then the numerator, that's going to become 3 times 6, which is 18 and the denominator is seven, okay? So this would be the y value of the whole. So basically this point right here would be five comma 18 sevenths, okay? And that kind of makes sense on the graph because 18 sevenths is a little bit more than two. Um, and it looks like this asymptote right here is the line y equals three, okay? So this is just a basic overview of our rational functions. Now we're gonna do lots of examples as to how to try to find these asymptotes as well as the left and right behavior, okay? But for right now, we're just going through and we're giving a basic overview of these. So in our next videos, we're gonna go ahead and do some examples.